empath envisions communities in which mental health care and education are readily accessible for all. Empath is part of the Advanced Acceleration Program co-implemented by Field Foundation and the Department of Trade and Industry. Steph Naval is the founder and CEO of Empath. So hello, Steph. We're very happy to have you here to start a podcast. Hi, it's great for you to have me. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, so let's start with the first question. Ano nga ba ang Empath? Yes, yeah, so Empath is a social enterprise that envisions accessible mental health care and psychoeducation through telemental health or online therapy, consultations, um, wellness programs, and psychoeducational training um, programs and services as well. Yeah, I think one of your taglines ano, is mental health access for all Filipinos. I think this is such a powerful vision. But let me ask you, gano nga ba kahalaga isolve ang problema ng ito? Yung, inac- yung inaccessibility to mental health. Yeah, it's been extremely, it's a very difficult and great task to work on. Actually, in Empath, we have something that's called dimensions of accessibility. So not um, a lot of people think accessibility is just monetary and also geographical, which is um, which is fair also. But we acknowledge that there are other buyers other than financial buyers and other um, geographical buyers. So for example, we also consider social buyers. So that's also when it comes to stigma against it because like let's say you might have you may be in proximity to the next psychiatrist and you might also have enough funds to pay for it but if you yourself believe that oh you're ashamed of going to the um get mental health um services and everything so it serves it serves as a barrier in itself or let's say your parents are not supportive of you on it and they they're not hoping to help or let you go to these mental health services so that's one there's like social One is also information, knowing who to contact, how to contact, who, what type of um, psychologist would be right for you. Would it be a psychiatrist, psychologist, counselor, a coach, or something like that? So um, that's something like information, just knowing what to do, what to, but who to go to. Um, like even people don't recognize that when it comes to assessments, there are different types of assessments, and then they can range from a variety or long um, type. So like even knowing the inf- of name or what type of assessments would be appropriate for you. So information. Another one would perhaps be less technology. So for sure, there's technology um, and then geographical, financial, and even efficiency. Like for example, in the mental health space right now, it would take around maybe one month to three months um, to be able to book a session. But at least in Empath, the way we address it is you can actually book already for the next day. So um, being also efficient and having to address these urgent and concerns immediately um, through technology. It also ex- expedites the process of a lot of things. So so just to, to wrap it up, um, it's a very heavy task. And the way in Empath, we, look at, we divide it into um, the dimensions or categorize them in certain dimensions of accessibility. Yeah, this is really very insightful. Ang galing how you, how you decompose it into those dimensions. Nakikita <laughs> talaga natin, gano'n nga ba? Ano yung like different um reasons kung bakit inaccessible ang mental health. So, I just want to highlight ano yung physical barrier, maybe uh, mahirap mag-commute pagpunta sa yeah. uh, into into a uh, uh, mental health um, practitioner and maybe financial nga maybe mahal and then also yung mental. I think yun yung isa sa mga underrated reasons now. Eh, na parang um sama ko sasabihin sa na okay lang yan. I mean, wal- walang kaso yan, but But we have to overcome that barrier also. I mean, not just personally, but also as a society. Um, pero puntahan muna natin yung like root cause maybe no, ng mental health issues or problems in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Hindi lang sa Pilipinas, but sa buong mundo. So, what do you think is the root cause of, of all these mental health issues? Um, maybe it, it's difficult to find a direct root cause, but we can have an umbrella cause, for example. So, like, honestly, I think with everything that's been happening in the world and people are becoming more self-aware, and I think also technology might have to deal with a certain factor of it, like the fast-pacedness of how we have to go faster and even faster, um, how we have so many things that we are rushed or like we are forced to do certain things more, um, the environment of what we're at, and it changes also our chemical breakup, how we develop as children. So a lot of things, but then definitely the world has changed since like a million years ago. So um, that's something that we were able to probably say that it's really like the world that we live in right now is much different from how it was generations ago. Yeah, so maybe uh, also your information, the amount of information we process every day, given mm-hmm. given smartphones, given all this information all around us in the digital era. Um, so yeah. empathy is actually solving this problem, and as you said, nga mayroong buyer. So it's nice. 
um, it would be nice to know no ano yung mga solutions kumbaga na ino-offer ni Empath um tackling each of those barriers i think yung physical like for example you have online or classes or online counseling so can you can you share with us the solutions Mm-hmm. Yes, sure. So, for example, oh, like by walking through the dimensions of accessibility, is that correct? Yeah, if it's okay. <laughs> yeah, sure, no problem. So, for us, for example, when it comes, the more obvious one is that if it's geographical, that's how we do online um, online uh, therapy. And also for exp- um, efficiency process. And there's also financial, we do have... Um, discounted rates also we do case per case basis or we have a tripartite a three-party type of system where we partner with a school and a foundation and then they provide and they fund and provide free consultations for students and teachers so we try to make certain set systems and setups like that that make it more helpful for those who need it the most um or there's also like employers would pay for their employees uh, mental health consultations for example um another one for social is that why one of the important pillars of empath is psychoeducation. So psychoeducation is technically mental health literacy or mental health 101. So why we find it is important is because we come from a philosophy that in order to fight the stigma, it's not just about fighting it or saying, oh, um, no, that's wrong, that shouldn't be. But what should you replace it with? Which should be like objective, educational and correct things about mental health. Um, and then a lot of people, why they have misconceptions is because they really just don't know. Like it's been a taboo topic some, for the longest time and people just have all these assumptions about it. And really, if they're just really educated about it, that's how we can take down the social barrier. That's why we have psychoeducational trainings or mental health workshops, mental health webinars. It's really to um, inform the community about it. So for information, that's why our platforms also set up that um, we're one of the rare um, mental health companies or providers that have over 20 mental health professionals that you can access. And this is, and we also put the description of their specialties. Um, there's also a description of like their um, what their what their interests and likes, um, if they're male, female, um, and if like their what their age is, etc. So find like demographic. Because I remember before they would just give you like oh they would just say oh here's one psychiatrist and here's your contact number that's it and you barely know anything about that yeah. person um, or for example the the school gives you oh here's a list of our go to referrals but voila like there's no information about them parang on your fingertips and then at least there and usually that's a list of like six or something and but for us you have a list and of 20 because it's also matching like it's also finding the right one for you so for empath we have let's say for um children um couples uh, financial stress that's also a specific specialty so yeah that's something that we try to offer and integrate in our services yeah, it's really interesting no your matching aspect it's true no that it really parang democratizes um the way the way people can get mental health um mental health counseling kasi for example baka naman yung makuha kong mental health professional hindi naman bagay hindi naman talaga mabibigay solutions for the specific problems that I have given like my demographics my profile um so just just to paint a picture for for the user or for the possible um um partner or gagamit ng empath um um it's actually f- can be used by individuals and organizations so i mean mm-hmm. how do they book a service and how is it done basically can you can you can you share a picture of how this happens yeah sure so for us we try to do a easy booking system you can just go to our website empath.ph and from there all you need to do is choose um the type of consultation you want so whether it's psychiatric take note psychiatric is if you want prescription of medication and psych um, psych consultations or regular consultations that we have or the standard ones we have are for usually talk therapy with them um, that focuses more on talk therapy so you can select one from adults or minors we also have family therapy so first you first you select one and then you choose your time like you just a booking time and then you can as early as like um, the next day, for example, for certain mental health professionals. And, and the third one is to just fill in your details and then last would be just confirm. So that can be done all under five minutes and it should be a lot easier when those exchanges and back and forth would take hours or days, depending how respondent is the secretary of that mental health professional. Mm, so Embat basically acts as a platform to connect no, yung, yung, yung possible users and yung mga mental health um, practitioners. Um 
Um, this happens online, is that right? Yung counseling. Do you think there are like challenges? Because I mean, I'm imagining like usually we, uh, I go to a uh, to a psychiatrist or or to a professional, and yeah, we 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 talk. Um, I get counseling. But do you think there are some difficulties or differences if it's online? Oh yes, definitely for sure. Um, like there there's a there's certain body languages you can't pick up as much. Um, internet interference for sure it does have its cons. That's why in the in some cases for empath we have some clients, especially in rural communities where internet is not as accessible. We do have special cases of face to face. So once we we had a partnership with ABS CBN Foundation, UNICEF, and then the Dep Ed of that. Um, In Surigao, um, we had a psychosocial support training there, and then it was really being able to cater to students, parents, and also guidance counselors were also involved. So for us, we're more of a complementary arm to the um, guidance counselors um, here in the mental health space because they're actually really um, overwhelmed and overworked because it's usually one to how many students. So empath is really here to help them and be able to be their um, their mental health arm. Like they have a whole fledge of 20 mental health professionals to help out their school, so that they have access to. So yeah, so definitely it does have its pros and cons. But hopefully in the future we'll be able to offer both um, in terms of let's say the online platform and then also maybe for special cases or projects we can fly or go to a rural area and help them there. Yeah, especially the problem then I think no, because hindi naman parang, parang hindi naman those mental health professionals are not all around the Philippines. I mean, hindi rin, maybe hindi rin ganun karami pa in the Philippines right now. Um, but there are also wellness classes and workshops. I think this is interesting. So, can you just share this 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 aspect of empath? Yeah, sure. So for us, we also understand holistic uh, mental health. Like mental health has different degrees. So there's the level of when it comes to the medication level, the clinical level, and there's one that's more like lighthearted and not as like heavy yet. So that's usually the degree of let's say wellness activity. So we do like expressive arts. Um, so for example, we have coffee painting, mandala doodle drawing, we even have wine tasting. So they're actually essentially just team building activities, but it's supposed to help build rapport and build relationships emotionally with team members through the aspect of mental health and wellness. And for this, this was very important because in the pandemic, what happened with a lot of companies and schools and communities was a lot of small talk was lost because you're not in the office or you're not in the school or you... but. Once you enter the Zoom meeting, it's poor work, then leave, and then go back again, work and leave. So um, these conversations are very much crucial in order to build good culture in the workplace. And that's something that these wellness classes can give. It's a fun activity they can do together and to bond as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if this analogy is correct or not, but somehow this meant these wellness classes are like in preventive care for our mental health. Tamantalang you like counseling. It's like the The proact, I mean the the cures, kumbaga sa men- certain mental health issues maybe. I'm not sure if that is correct. But anyway, um, I'd like to ask, sino ba yung usually gumagamit or usually customers or clients ni Empath? You've mentioned um a while ago na meron kayong partnerships with this with, with these big companies. Pero I uh, like on a personal level or on a on a human level, like do you think meron parang certain patterns or trends um uh, about those people na na gustong kumuha or gustong ma-resolve ang, ang kanilang mental health issues maybe for for us at least for our company there seems to be more of the younger generation um when it comes to approaching mental health services i think that's rooted back to the uh, the adoption of let's say how they perceive mental health and how aware they are about the importance of mental health care and everything um but then doesn't mean that older generations um, don't experience mental health problems. They may call it different names like midlife crisis or like, oh, I'm getting old. I'm just like feeling down about life, something like that. But then I've had, especially, and it's very heartwarming because I've had older men specifically because also men get hesitant because there's that macho culture of like, you can't really express your feelings. So um, for example, older men that come out like mga 50s or 60 years old that come up to me and say, you know what, thank you so much, Steph, for um, building something like Empath because this is something I wish I had back in like decades ago because I've been suffering for anxiety and depression for so long and I only found out like maybe five years or a decade ago lang or something and I've been like suffering in silence, everything. So it doesn't mean that majority of like let's say the younger generations or this type of group have men- go to get mental health concerns. doesn't mean that the others 
that don't necessarily go never had or barely have. Um, that was an interesting insight. I think it's more of an intel of who has a more openness towards mental health services also. Yeah, I think um, because I think empath it's not just a platform. I mean, it's also building the ecosystem, connecting people to to mm-hmm. mental health professionals. And like um, part of no, building the ecosystem, maybe the community also. And the normalization na uh, anyone really can have these mental health issues. Na na masasolve natin if we if we if we treat it like a like a usual illness or something. Um, so knowing this, um, what what's your personal like kugot or parang bakit talaga nagsimula ang empath or bakit mo talaga sinimulan si empath knowing knowing that empath is actually a social enterprise i mean it, it has that kind of um touch on it so can you just share some back stories behind empath yeah sure so empath started because because of a personal advocacy of mine for mental health at 14 years old i was already manifesting several mental health conditions and it made it extremely difficult to navigate Uh, through the mental health care system in the Philippines, most especially uh, there's like all the pain points, the dimensions of accessibility was a framework I made because of my pain points and experiences when it came to how difficult the mental health care system was. So it was born out of that experience, um, but it's just an informal framework that we follow by an empath because it brings a lot of clarity and interest with how we approach the problem of accessibility. So it's more of we um, we categorize it in also sectors and take note these these um, dimensions can overlap that's why it's dimensions um, so with this I had to go through I've went through like five different psychologists psychiatrists um, been like with um, these all these applications everything extremely difficult um, it was also difficult for my family but I think at the end I finally found the right one I finally found the proper treatment but that looked like seven years of imagine of how costly that was. I was just fortunate enough I had enough money to the end to pay for those things. Or I was fortunate enough that I had psych friends who gave me good information that ah for a psychiatrist it's for medication. For a psychologist it's more of talk therapy. And then it's good to have both sometimes. So um like all these like just just lucky enough to be able to overcome this. But imagine the average person won't Um, they'll probably like by the first three sessions, if they didn't have a good experience, they'll give up already and already have a bad idea about the mental health system. So I was thinking, you know, I could just wait and hope that the mental health care system will change. And I said, you know, I want to do something about it. Like um, I did consider that I can be a psychologist and everything, but I knew studying the sciences and being a master for that really wasn't my strongest asset. Um, and For me, I was more I was more equipped in business. Like my family had a background in business. Um, where they're more of like like my lolo set up his own businesses. My dad did his own businesses. And then for me, like uh, I guess third generation type of entrepreneur or business person set up. So you know what? I really want to still pursue this passion of mental health, but then I'll do it in a way that it utilizes my assets and strengths. So that was like a road less traveled by for sure. Um, and yeah, so that's why I decided that I wanted to start Empath. I really have a, a vision of greatly improving the mental health care system here in the Philippines, and most especially, especially because of I've gone through it for like right now it's already 10 years. So I started when I was 14, and, and now I'm 24. So yeah, so it's really from that experience, and really hoping that it's a real problem that I really want to address. And I can imagine, you know, that you know, yung problem na yun. Um, Um, most likely other people are also facing these mental health issues and may, sometimes hindi nila alam na meron na sila or parang um, it's, it's, it's hard really to know given like what other people say so um, it's really commendable no, that you started Empath and I think napakadakila nitong, nitong movement na to or no, actually yung step of building the startup I'm uh, moving forward um, like how did you get like the maybe the technical um, skills maybe needed to to build the app I mean can you just continue the 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 story moving forward and maybe um what really pushes you to to build empath even further <laughs> for me it's really my experience also and i know so many other people who share the same experience as me um it's really that and being moved by it also like i knew how much how much difficult and how much suffering and pain is put into it like you're already having mental health struggles and it's all the more um, dramatic or uh, exacerbates the problem when you have to go through a healthcare system that's supposed to be you do have a right for it to be um, proper treatment and that wasn't happening also or like it was very difficult 
difficult. Um, so yes, it's really that really just moves me, and also the stories of other people, and sometimes people who send messages on our Instagram or Facebook, thanking them that they really appreciated their session or like um, their partner. Um, like a booked for a session for example and it really helped change their life or we have people had feedback na um yeah you know i noticed in my friend because i recommended empath i noticed my friend like she seems a lot lighter and happier and yeah so like it's stories success stories like that and also injustices quote unquote that are happening with um people who are having difficult times navigating their way through the mental health care system was it easy or hard getting the support getting maybe Teammates are getting, I don't know, getting the resources needed to to build the the startup. Yeah, so for for sure, it was extremely hard. Like I think a lot of people also tend to glamorize about startup, like um, an entrepreneurship. But for sure, it was extremely difficult. Like we had people who, you know, who say you have a really nice advocacy staff, but I don't want to stick around. Like um, finding the right team and type people. I'm just really fortunate of having a really good team now, and things are slowly stabilizing, and we're setting the foundations. In empath and um, for sure there are people who would be skeptical about it like with any other new idea but I think it's also important to learn from them where the place that they're coming from empathize with what the reason why um, their their criticisms are and then like take it also the grain of salt like if there's something valid that they say then you improve on it um, if it's not or they're probably missing out something then it's okay you can leave it out like at least considering it so I guess one of the difficulties was first also um, there are people who'd be Um, hesitant about it another one would be finding the right team the right people like it was really trial and error um, but I think what got me going on, oh what also is difficult was I was relatively younger than a lot of the people like the clients that I was talking to and it also was an insecurity because I was like a woman founder and I was younger than a lot of them um, and then like I had to prove my worth in the sense na is she really in this for the long run um, is she really serious about it So these were like certain challenges, like biases, and then um, forming a team, and at the same time the idea of flying. But I think for me it was all very much worth it in the end. It's still worth it. I think what really got me going was really grit. Grit was very important, and grit came from a passion um, to be able to solve the problem because I myself have suffered from it. So passion will give, will sure, um, passion will create that spark for you to do the first move. But grit will. Keep you consistent and making sure you see it through. And actually, I, I listened actually, actually to to your to the podcast episode with Para Kanino by Adriel. I I remember grit and hope. I still remember that those two words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, anyways, um, speaking of um, speaking of social enterprises and making impact into the community. Um, earlier this year, you actually joined um Field of Foundations and DTI Philip DTI's. Advanced acceleration program. So first, um, I'd like to ask why did you join this program, um, and maybe how did it help you um, building Empath as a startup as a social enterprise? Yes, I think it was a really great experience. I really like the field dev uh, team. They've been super supportive and really helpful, and they really I love how they really care about really being keen on what are the needs of the startup. What do they really need right now? Is it effective? And then they'll act upon it. I really appreciated the quality of speakers they had. Um, really love the support system they provided, like free consultations for a certain number of consultations for like accounting and also marketing services. And then legal was, I think it was my favorite one. I got really close to it, Tony Raymond, um, which I also would like to really vouch for him that he's been super helpful in building uh, the legal foundations for Empath also. And yeah, he's a really great guy, um, great lawyer, lawyer to work with. And yeah, so like really glad to have connected to those people. They also So connected us with potential clients, potential partners, and I think it was a very fruitful experience with them. Yeah, speaking of Attorney Raymond, no, actually we have a, we have an episode with him, with him and the startup digest. It's a startup podcast. And actually, earlier when you said you like you're connecting or you're matching the mga users ni Empat sa mga mental health professionals, I think it's actually kind of the same with with what he's doing with. But on that side, connecting with lawyers na may may specialization doon sa need ng mm-hmm. certain person. Maybe sa empath nga ma, uh, ma-connect yung with specialization to certain um, profile, to certain background, to certain kind of work maybe. Um, mm-hmm. And then next week, 
although maybe marikis natin ng episode nato after na is the demo day ng advanced program. So what are I mean maybe how are you um, preparing for the pitch and parang what do you expect coming out of the demo day? <laughs> Um, I'm looking forward to it also because I think I'm not sure if you're familiar, but then they're using Gather. It's a digital platform. It's really cute. It's like you're in a video game, so that's really exciting. And I guess just really practicing the pitch, refining it, um, lear- um, applying all the lessons that I've learned also throughout the program. And yeah, looking forward to it. It's gonna be like we're in a video game. First time to ever to ever use a platform like that in an event. And looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll also really be joining, of course, no, a startup podcast. Uh, I'll, I'll be watching pitches of of the advanced um, accelerators. Um, so yeah, so let's end this conversation with ano nga ba ang vision ng Empath? Not just for Empath as a startup, pa, but maybe like yung whole parang mental health um, um, ecosystem maybe in the Philippines. So what do you see in the future, and how are you building the future the, towards the, that future? I think I would love to have like honestly, like if I. If I could like, if I could have a really big dream to be able to reach over, like to the point that I think I would want mental health care access to be available even in the rural areas all over the Philippines. Like for some way or form, they'll be able to access it. Um, that's that's like a concrete, oh no, to other than serving the big ones about like serving millions of Filipinos to be able the fact that people like that um, from. Public schools, although we do cater to some public schools because of like good funding from um, foundations and nonprofits, like public schools, um, teachers, or even other families, Filipino families, that are very much open to go to mental health and to treat mental health like a, like they can have mental health checkups or like to really um, take out that stigma also. So I think for a concrete vision, it's like to the point that, that our impact reaches rural areas. Mm, it's really interesting. Yeah, so maybe no. I mean, there's really a lot of work what to do, and hopefully, nga lahat ng barriers, ng dimensions. I really like that. Ah, the dimensions of 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 it accessibility to mental health. Maganda really na na, na decompose niyo as a startup yun, because I really think that's how you can offer solutions. Na talagang magamit and talagang makakasolve ng mental health problems in the Philippines. Yeah, so um, thank you, Steph, no, for this conversation. It's really good. So if listeners want to know more about Empath, maybe they want to use, maybe they they want to to be connected with with a mental health professional or they want to attend a mental uh, awareness class. So um, how can they get more information, or is there something you want to promote, maybe, or to or just to share to to our listeners? Yeah, so for Empath, you can even book on our platform or check out their website, empath.ph. Or if you can follow or subscribe to our social media platforms, which would be like Instagram, Facebook, um, even LinkedIn. So it's at empath underscore ph. And you can get free mental health um, educational content. And we found others to for it to be quite useful for them. So happy to be of service. And these are all completely free psychoeducational content. So, um, and there's such gold gold nuggets of wisdom sometimes so happy to um for you to experience and be also able to benefit from that yeah i actually like the facebook page you know and parang yung branding is and yung lahat ng images na makikita even the words parang picture to be coming even yung even as i see you now yung background yung color i think it's a good choice of color right? yung medyo olive green i think it has a soothing effect somehow parang bamboo parang yung mga nasa yo spa or like yoga places uh yeah so for some reason uh may yeah that's effect. the idea it's supposed <laughs> to be like a calming warm and friendly presence not too loud in a sense now it's just like it's like Yeah, it's really warmth, and then just a friend here to have also hope. The hope is also a very interesting theme, and the tones of that we try to have or pepper in into some of our posts. <laughs> But glad you picked that up. The branding, <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. I really feel it. Yeah, so really, ch- ch- hope and greet. I really like those two words. Yeah, so, ah, mm-hmm. uh, salamat Steph for this conversation. Yo, know? so thank you, thank you for sharing about empath. Yeah, maraming salamat. Thank you so much. Thank you very much to our 18 patrons. This episode is super powered by NutriCoach, the all-in-one productivity tool for dietitians and nutritionists. Looking for buy and sell online with Sigurado sellers and Benjoy's food products, the home of premium bacon ends, tapa, and tocino. This episode is powered by ePlayment, Interleukin, and ROC.ph. Support us at www.patreon.com slash startuppodcastph.